Well, hey everybody. This video is going to talk about workflow with DxO Pure Raw. Specifically, the question I get often is, with new images, what's the best order to do things in? Work on the raw, then the processed DNG that comes out of Pure Raw. And for older images that you've already processed, how do you get those uh, edits from Lightroom's Develop or Adobe Camera Raw into your new DNG? That's going to be the topic of this video. Here's an example have this bald eagle that I've already processed in the raw format, straight out of the camera. I look at it and think, yeah, I kind of like this, but clearly it needs some help from DxO Pure Raw. So we're going to talk about how to do this in this video. Okay, so let's take a look at these workflow options. So here's my bald eagle image that I showed in the intro. This has been opened in the develop module. I've done a few edits. You can see a few edits over here in the exposure section. I've also added a mask, just targeting the bird. So I've done a little bit of work on it already in the develop module. If I go back to grid view and look right next to it, here is the same image after those edits and processed through DxO Pure Raw. Well, obviously those edits haven't been applied, the crop's not been applied, none of those have been applied. So why not? Well, it's a pretty simple question to answer. It's because of the way I have my Lightroom set up configured. So if I go to Lightroom Catalog Settings, one of the options here is automatically write changes into XMP. There are two camps on this, two schools of thoughts whether you should or should not. This is not a video about trying to address that topic. You do what makes you happy. For my purposes, I do not write into the XMP sidecar files. If you choose to, that's great. Go ahead and do that. For me, I don't do that. When you do edits in the develop module, that information, all of those edits are being written into the Lightroom catalog. So when that image gets transferred over to DxO, to create the DNG, that information is not sent with it. So that's why these two images look different. But how could I get all of the edits I've done on this over to here? It's really simple. First I'm going to select by just clicking on the raw file, then I'm going to hold down Command or Control, depending on your platform, and click on the output from DxO, the, the DNG. Order is important. You need to click the raw file first, and then second, the DNG. Once those two are selected, down in the lower right-hand corner of the library module is a Sync Settings button. You press that and you get this window that pops up. And you can see there's all kinds of things that you could choose to select or not select. What you want to synchronize is everything except detail, which includes sharpening noise reduction, because DxO is doing that and uncheck all the lens corrections because DxO has its own lens correction modules which are superb. So you, if yours doesn't look like this, and notice I don't have masking checked over here, but I'm going to just show you a quick way to sort of get everything that you want. Check none, check all, uncheck detail, uncheck, uncheck that, you're there. I'm going to move this out of the way, click synchronize. Your edits were synced and it's updating the AI mask. That mask was a subject mask. It's done and look, now my uh, processed DNG, the one that came out of DxO, looks identical or nearly identical to the raw file. So let's look at this one. There's the raw file. Right arrow over to the other one. And the only difference you're seeing, at least uh, at this magnification probably is a little bit of change just because of the lens corrections. Let me go to grid view and compare those two. So I'll just click in, zoom in up to, I don't know, let's use 200%. And you can see the original raw file on the right, the DNG DxO processed file on the left, and clearly 
far superior results. All the noise has been removed. Sharpness is great. Now, 200%, you're past the resolution of the monitor. Let me go back to 100%, just so you can see it at pixel resolution. And obviously, this is a much better image. That's the workflow that I choose to use, is simply synchronize those those two files together. It's very simple. There is another way to go about doing it if you choose to do so. So I'm going to demonstrate that on this particular raw file. So if I take this over to the develop module, you can see that it has had some develop settings applied to it. I don't think this one has any masks. No, I didn't. But if you had a mask, that's fine. Or any other settings you had in any other panel in the develop module. So the other option available to you is if you, for some reason, wanted the XMP sidecar file for this singular image, you could create it. But let's go look in Finder and see what's there so I can show you the XMP thing. So this is in a folder, DxO sample images on my machine. I'm going to go to Finder for this image. So that'll open up on Finder. If you're on Windows, it would be Windows File Explorer. And you can see I have two raw files. I have the subfolder for DxO. So this image has no sidecar file. If I want it, I simply have the image selected, metadata, save metadata to file. Now all of those processing instructions are sitting in an XMP sidecar file. Back to Finder. There it is. That's what just got created. Okay, so now if I take this image and I run it through DxO Pure Raw, so let's do that. File, plug in extras, process with DxO Pure Raw 3. It fires up DxO Pure Raw to give me the options that I want to choose to process with. We'll see that pop up. I'm going to use Deep Prime XD. I'm going to go ahead and use Strong on the lens softness, and I'm going to click Start. This will take a little while, so we'll speed up the video until it's finished and back into Lightroom. Okay, so now that image is back into the Lightroom catalog. Let's go to the folder where that resides. So it's in the DxO subfolder. Let me go to its parent folder. Here's the raw file. Here's the DxO. You can see that all of those develop settings have already been applied because there was an XMP sidecar, sidecar file. So that's another way to, to go about it. Again, my preference is not to have XMP. I just simply synchronize. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how to solve this exact same problem. If you are not a Lightroom user, you just use Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. So on the screen, I am in Adobe Camera Raw. I have two images opened. The one you're looking at is the raw file up at the top. It says so right there. And the second one is that DNG that we had processed earlier. Same image, just through DN, through uh, Pure Raw. So obviously they don't look the same. I've, I've cropped. I've changed some exposure values. So how would I go about synchronizing these two images since they don't look the same? It's very simple. If I select the raw file first, hold Command or Control, depending on your platform, select the second one, click the three dots right here, and choose Sync Settings right there. And you'll get a window that looks very similar in concept to the one we saw in the Lightroom example. Some of the names are slightly different. Um, if yours looks different, again, simple solution, check none, check all, uncheck detail, because under detail is sharpening in the noise reduction stuff, and it's called optics in Adobe Camera Raw. That's all the lens profile corrections that DxO Pure Raw is doing for you, so you don't want that. And that's all there is to it. Now just synchronize them. If I click OK, now you can see that the DxO... DNG is processed the same. The only difference that you see going between them is the lens profile correction, as well as obviously the great processing to remove noise and sharpening and all that good stuff that DxO Pure Raw does for you. So that's a really simple 
concept, same thing, synchronize the settings. The other example I did over in the Lightroom example was what happens if you wanted to write out the XMP information from the raw file and then take it over to DxO Pure Raw. You can do the same thing here. I've selected my raw file. I come over to this menu under the three dots, export settings to XMP. That will take them out of the camera raw database, as it's called, and store it as a file, sidecar file XMP. Where's that stuff controlled as to whether or not you're using them or not in camera raw? Down here at the bottom, that's a button. If you come up to file handling, you'll see there's a sidecars section. That it's under DNG file handling, but there's three options under there. Ignore sidecar files, always use sidecar files, or embed XMP and DNG. That's where you turn it on if you want to use it. So you could say always use them if that's what you want to do. The default again is it's not on. Let me cancel that. I have a page open in a web browser. I will link to this page down below so you can read it. It's directly from Adobe that describes in a little bit more detail what those settings are. Don't make it complicated. It's either basically use XMP or don't. But if you wanted to read more information, I'm going to link to this in the information below. So there's one other place where you can access those settings for how you're configured for Adobe Camera Raw. We did it inside of Camera Raw with this button down here to get to the menu. Let's just open this image in Photoshop so you can see where it is in Photoshop. So I've got that one selected. I'm just going to say open a copy of it. Now we have that image over here. It's up in the Preferences section of Photoshop. So if I come up to the Photoshop menu, be a little different on Windows, Preferences, Camera Raw. There's the exact same menu that you saw when we did it inside of Camera Raw. Change the settings as you wish here. So I hope that information has been helpful to you. I choose not to use XMP sidecar files. Again, this is not a video about debating that topic. If you don't want to use them, don't. If you do use them, that's great. That's a, a workflow option that's completely up to you. I think the easiest workflow, at least my workflow, is if I have new images that I have yet to process and I think they need to be run through DxO, they're high ISO, I want to deal with some of that noise, then I run it through DxO before I do any processing on the original RAW file out of the camera. Then I just simply take that DNG and I process it in Develop or Adobe Camera Raw if you're an Adobe Camera Raw user as normal. There's no difference whatsoever. DNG is a raw file format. For older images or images that, that you've already processed, all you have to do is synchronize the settings. It's as simple as that. It's just that that question comes up and I wanted to clarify it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Happy shooting. See ya next time.